What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to a new episode of the Triflix Cast. I'm Tristan Watkins, and this is the show where we interview innovative people, creative people throughout the community. And today we have a very creative individual, Mr. Wolfgang Hooser. Uh, he has started kind of a personal brand business type of sorts where he goes on and he streams video games. Mm -hmm. Previously, we had someone by the name of Josiah Ochen who streamed okay. specifically uh, 2K as well as like, he, play, he streamed some other games, but he was uh, playing competitively for 2K basketball. Mm -hmm. But today we have Mr. Wolfgang Hooser. Yeah. We're happy to have you on, man. Appreciate it. This is cool. Really cool for me. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he streams several titles, uh, yep. usually whatever's pop in the week. But I think his go to lately has been the, the Fortnite series. And now he's starting maybe to migrate a little over to the Call of Duty scene. Yeah. So I would say, yeah, I'm a variety, variety streamer. Mm -hmm. um, I started streaming on Fortnite. Um, or no, 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 that's not true. I actually started streaming, uh, playing PUBG a lot. Okay. Um, PUBG was a fun game. Yeah. I was going to say, uh, like my first ever hours on Twitch were probably PUBG. Mm -hmm. Um, I may, I, I'm trying to think PUBG and, and Battlefield probably. Yeah. So two first person shooters, right? Mm hmm. And yep. for people that don't know, first person shooter, uh, we've talked about this before, just you running around with uh, usually a gun, some sort of weapon, taking on uh, other people online. Yeah. High com high competition. Yeah, it's like a it's a point a per like your your point of view kind of game, right? Yeah. Hands on game. Um, uh, I think that the what inspired me to kind of start streaming, uh, was, I kind of I I I I've always played video games ever since like, I say I first started when I was like in fourth grade or something right. like that yeah and uh, i always have played like on console i got my first uh xbox so i played on playstation i, I had a playstation one uh playstation 2 mm -hmm. for a long time and then i got the xbox 360 a little while after it went it came out or whatever um and then you know went on from there i've uh, i my last console was an xbox one s mm-hmm uh, and then I sold it um, and just didn't play games for a long time. Right. Um, I, I, I don't think I played a game for like a year maybe. Mm -hmm. And then I decided I wanted to kind of, oh, I know what it was. Uh, I finished up school mm -hmm. um, and kind of had some time and was like, man, I'd like to pick up a hobby again and I'd like to get into gaming. Um, and I figured if I'm going to do it this time around, I'll do the PC route. Right. You know. So what was your reason for that? Um I think that I just wanted to try going to the next level, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh I've just always played console and I I know that and I I just I knew that PC was going to be a better experience. Right. Uh so I thought, well, you know, um I'll save up and try it out. Mm -hmm. And I, I bought my first PC, um, did a lot of research. I'm that kind of guy that does all, a, a ton of research and finds out like what people like, what, you know, what do competitive gamers uh, do get or, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, and, and what, whatever, and with everything like peripherals and, it, and all that stuff. And um, when I get a, like a pretty good price tag going on, I'll save pretty good, pretty right. quick for it um sell stuff whatever yeah. work overtime at work and stuff but um you said that um you wanted to switch from console to pc because you thought it would have an, a better experience what what do you mean by that and does it have you since you've started playing on pc has it provided that experience you were expecting oh yeah uh it's a big difference and uh, and the the funny thing is i tell uh going from that uh it was just like, whoa, it was a big difference mm -hmm. just because of how much uh, smoother the computer runs over the console. Um, the more you have the or like just the resources that you have with uh, a PC compared to just a console. Yeah. Um, and with a PC, my thoughts were if I ever wanted to get into something like streaming, that was going to be the best uh, experience for mm -hmm. it. Because uh, I, I kind of thought thought about it, but wasn't really into it yet. 
Um, but yeah, go ahead. So whenever you switched over from console to, uh, I assume, it, well, you went to PC, but I assume a mouse and keyboard. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I, I grew up, you know, a console kid as well. You know, mm -hmm. I played Xbox and PlayStation, all that, and I really learned to like become quite skilled with the controller. Mm -hmm. But whenever you switch over to a mouse and keyboard, did you, did that require a learning curve? And how long before do you feel like you're as good at a video game? with a mouse and keyboard as you were with a controller when you used to play? So I would say that that year that I took off, of, like a good solid year I took off of playing video games, never mm -hmm. really even using a controller, um, it, it I, I would say it helped in the transition, mm -hmm. whereas m a lot of my buddies that uh, kind of get into the PC scene try it, and they're like, no way, yeah. right? Uh, and I think it's just that muscle memory thing mm -hmm. that it's just not, it's just so weird. Right. Yeah. Uh, it took me, I would say probably a good, so like when I got the PC, I forced myself not to get a controller. Right. I made sure I was like, no, I'm going to force myself to learn this. Right. Yeah. That's the only way I'm going to get decent at it. Um, and I know that, uh, it's going to provide a pretty good advantage, mm -hmm. um, in, in certain situations. I would, I would say, I don't agree with that with all games. But in, in some games, I think that mouse and keyboard are, are probably going to be your best bet, especially if you're going to be um, like competitive and stuff. Yeah, especially for first-person shooters. Yeah. Like when we were talking to Josiah Ochin, he plays co competitively, and everyone uses either the, the controller or – it's mostly – I think everyone uses a controller, and I asked him why, and uh, that's just – you know that's it, it's so much easier, I guess, to play 2K with that. There's yeah, not really yeah. a, a I, huge advantage. I would agree with that. Um, some games – a controller is going to be be better, mm -hmm. and and um, I would say games like um, oh mostly third person games. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Like I I would say a great example would be a two K game because mm -hmm. a mouse and keyboard you're not um I mean it's probably not going to be your best you're not I don't know just having this is going to be easier and better especially with a camera point of view where it's like. You're running, and then the you know, like let's say, you know, the other team gets the ball, and then the camera flips around. Like that's just the mouse and keyboard's not really going to be and probably like driving advantage. games too. Yeah, 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 I would, I would definitely agree with that because I tried Dirt Three mm -hmm. on mouse and keyboard. No, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, no, yeah. no. So, uh, so how yeah. many? I, I most people would like refer to video games like the time it takes to learn something. It's usually measured in hours, right? So how many hours or maybe whatever whatever measurement you want to use do you, before you felt that you were as good with the mouse and keyboard? Uh, yeah, I would say for me personally, it took me a pre, like a pretty good solid three weeks to get the hang of it. Mm -hmm. um, just forcing myself to just, just jump into the game and just whatever happens happens and just try to learn from it and right. just keep doing it over and over and over and i did it i did it for hours a night uh, just trying and trying and trying, trying until i started to do better and then i finally got my first win and mm -hmm. then just you know and then just practice and practice because that's all it really is just muscle memory yeah and once you get it down especially games like fortnite fortnite is tough yeah because it's not just like shooting at people there's building yeah, and there's a lot the of biggest thing tactical yeah. mm -hmm. thoughts that you have to have yep um wow okay and uh whenever you started streaming did you have a goal or and you and also what inspired you to start streaming i know you said you wanted to find a hobby but was there someone that you used to watch or, or something along that lines yeah so um i would say what kind of inspired me to get into streaming was um kind of cruising through youtube and because when I was started on mouse and keyboard, I wanted to find people that were good at mm -hmm. the game and and maybe watch them and see what they do and see how um, they or like see if they give tips and tricks and stuff like that. And I remember I, I stumbled upon Shroud, right? Yeah. Because I was into the PUBG right. scene and at that time. He was the best, of course. He was in, insane. People still call him a human aimbot because he's that good. Yeah, I still watch him. Mm -hmm. I think he's playing Modern Warfare right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, watching him play any video game is like insane because that's just he's really good at like his aim is perfect like mm -hmm. almost every time. But that's because he practices, 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 and like he knows his setup and knows mm -hmm. how it's gonna work and stuff. 
Um, so yeah, I stumbled upon Shroud, um, and also, uh, I'm trying to think of who else, kind of like laughed and watched him and Dr. Disrespect a couple times, thought that was really funny, it was yeah. really entertaining. Yeah, so um, good personality, but also skilled. Right, exactly. Just like fun, but fun to watch, mm -hmm. right, but also really good, right? Um, so I think that kind of like just seeking out how I can improve my gameplay, I kind of was like, man, that'd be fun to stream, you know, if I ever got decent enough. And I started to get all right at PUBG, and I thought, okay, I'll try it out. And so I did a bunch of research on streaming, and I started getting into it. So, yeah. And whenever you, I guess, what would, um, did you have, like, an original vision for how big you wanted to get? Or, I guess, I mean, you're still in the growing stage right now, mm -hmm. but, like, is there... Um, is there like a target for you or is this just a recreational fun thing that you like if it if it gets bigger gets bigger but at the end of the day this is a way for you to relax um so i think that my biggest thought was for the streaming thing was um i it, it was fun watching all those guys and and uh just they're a ball and they're um big inspirations for me but i thought you know what i haven't seen really is like a real good solid family friendly streamer but plays games that people like to play right mm -hmm. and i could see that um um parents may not want to let their kids watch those guys right yeah but like still really like the games and want to watch people play those games but yeah dr you know. disrespect gets a little edgy you know occasionally he's uh, he's yeah he's stone <laughs> mountain acolyte acolyte's yeah. pretty he's pretty yeah pretty family friendly but i mean i know what you mean like there's right a, there's a smaller... there's a hand there's only a handful that i can yeah. think of um but yeah, it's just it's hard to find mm -hmm. something like that. A good solid community that's just about having fun and being sportsmanlike, I guess, and yeah. just like whatever. Which you know, those guys are just really fun to watch, and and they're really awesome people too. Like mm -hmm. I've seen, they've they've done all kinds of really awesome charities and all kinds of stuff. But um, at the end of the day, that was my goal was to kind of try to um, get into games that were popular that people like to watch, mm -hmm. but also provide a family friendly um clean stream i guess you know yeah no, that makes so, sense and it's really hard to do by the way <laughs> oh i bet <laughs> really hard to do especially when you're frustrated yeah oh well me personally yeah there's times it's like man you know but uh what i'm like the hardest part for me was like man you know what i can't play with random people anymore oh right because yeah. i can't really i can't really monitor that mm -hmm. so so i started playing lots of solo stuff and and that can get kind of boring um but then I started picking up some buddies, um, and to kind of I, well, the first thing I do is I tell them, "Hey guys, um, I try to keep it as family friendly as possible, right? Um, I don't want them to think that they can't be themselves because I want them to be themselves." Uh, and and I and I tell them, and you know, so try to keep you know the language down to a minimum. Yeah. If if it slips, I'm not going to freak out. I'm just I'm just letting you know I would appreciate it greatly, right? Yeah. And a lot of times people are really good. I mean, every now and then they'll slip up but but they usually catch themselves and go, "Oh, I'm sorry, man." I'm like, "No, it's fine." Remember I said I was going to freak out. Just I would just ask you to please try, you Yeah. Know? That's good. Um yeah, but so you have a, like a group of friends that you play with mm -hmm. or are these people you've met online or yes. what's your relation? So, uh I would say um, one of the the guy that I play with the most, uh, uh, X Nighthawk four thirteen X, my good buddy Craig. Okay. He uh, uh, he got into the streaming thing too. I kind of like inspired him to do it. I I told him, man, you're really good at Fortnite, and um, you're just you're a lot of fun, and you're and you're you like you're, he's kind of like in the same boat as I am. He mm -hmm. he's just likes to have fun, good clean fun, you know. Yeah. Uh. So I was like, man, you should stream, you know? And he was like, oh, okay. And he started streaming too. So like we always buddy up and play games together. So That's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And and we've kind of gathered two communities together and, and we all know each other in a way. And um, it's just kind of cool playing. We play with a lot of the guys that follow us too. And they know that we try to keep it clean and, and they do a really good job. It's really cool. That's really neat. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and as far as like starting out, so you're, I've seen your setup 
recently and it's really nice like, yeah that took me a long time to get, all right yeah. that's what i was going to get uh-huh. at is what whenever you first started out like the the difference in quality and the difference in gear did you uh, you had mentioned that you want to you have an idea you save up for it and you do your best like to build it up did you mm-hmm. wait until you had the setup to start or um, what it was the start out like for you so uh i definitely did not I did my best to come up with what I could at the mm-hmm. time. I didn't have a whole lot of um, money laying around. Um, I just bought what I, ha- I could get, mm-hmm. right? And I just started on that. Um, and I had a, just a single PC sh- stream going. I, I did buy another a second monitor because at first I just played with one monitor, Yeah. right? Because that's all I could afford at the time. And then eventually I was able to get a second monitor, Um What's the benefit of a second monitor? Just so you keep an eye on your stream, right? Ah. Like you have OBS on one side and then play the game on the other one, and right? And OBS is... Like uh, uh, open open broadcast uh, service, I think that's what it is. So that's what you use to mm-hmm. display your gameplay to people yeah. watching. I use uh, OBS Studios. Some people use uh, Streamlabs OBS. I tried it, and it's a great program. Um, I would it, And OBS is just... Uh, it, it Streamlabs partners with OBS, and it's it's the same platform. It's just they kind of make it a lot more simple. Yeah. Um, and I'm kind of the guy that likes to get into the like advanced yeah, stuff and really details. really test things. Mm-hmm. And um, so I've always really kind of stuck with with OBS, Good. whatever. But um, but yeah, I started out with one computer. Um, uh, it was really pushing its limits. Yeah. Um, it was hard to play some games. I could not play Apex. When it came out, I could not play it. Wow. And stream it. And it's pretty... Okay, I can see mm-hmm. with stream. I was going to say, it's not a too too intensive of a game, but no. the point being, like, you had an idea, and you didn't let money or resources get in the way of you trying it and starting it something new. Right. I think that's really cool. Yeah. It was, it was, it's been a long journey. I think I have over, like, 520 hours streamed on Twitch, but before that, probably almost yeah. that much in gaming. Yeah. You know, so whenever uh, PUBG came out, I if a lot of the games, if you go into the settings, they'll show you how many hours you've played. Mm-hmm. So I, I, pretty similar to you, I build a computer uh, from the ground up, and I played mouse and keyboard for third party or third person games, and I always played controller for first person on like console and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I put like I tried like you would try to get into the the gameplay with the uh, mouse and keyboard, and after like I think PUBG was five hundred hours. And uh, what was the other game I played? Uh, Rust. Rust mm-hmm. is a pretty cool game mm-hmm. uh, where you like mm-hmm. survival tactic stuff. And I put another 200 hours in that, which sounds like a lot, by the way. Mm-hmm. But whenever you recount how many hours a week or how, how many hours a year you watch TV, you read books, you play video games, I think a lot of people would be surprised. But So 500 hours isn't too much for a year of gameplay. And I, I didn't use a controller for that whole time. And I was just awful. Yeah, <laughs> I was so yeah. bad, and I tried playing with a. I got a console, uh, a controller, uh, transmitter, and then like the gameplay just went up to the next level for me. Mm-hmm. Like I was able to compete, I was able to have fun. So I uh, just kind of like want to reiterate that it's it's good to like find a place that you can start at comfortably, and maybe someday I'll be as good as you with the <laughs> mouse and keyboard. I- I'm not the best, that's for sure, but I will say it it. It took lots of practice yeah. and like messing with settings and sensitivities and mm-hmm. watching people. One of the guys that we watch a lot uh, and er, is like somebody that I really trust when it comes to like Fortnite stuff is like yeah. Cypher PK. Okay. Is he um, a big streamer or someone you know? Yeah, personally? he's a, he's a big streamer. Yeah. yeah. Um. Uh. And he's actually pretty pretty cool. I've 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 tipped him a couple dollars before and asked him questions and he'll give you everything you need to know. Um. He's just a really awesome guy. Um, very competitive when it comes to Fortnite. Mm-hmm. Um, I've learned a lot from him. In fact, he recently I applied one of the things that I learned from him, and we won a game from it. And it was really neat because Craig was like, "Oh my gosh!" I was like, "Yeah, remember Cipher said to do that?" And it mm-hmm. was kind of neat. So, but yeah, so yeah, it just takes uh, lots of practice. Yeah, yeah. I think most things do. I maybe I'm just too impatient. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I would say that Fortnite was the hardest for me to keep doing, uh-huh. <laughs> is because the building is hard. It's right. really hard. Yeah. 
Okay. Well, you started to mention, uh, like with Cypher there, somebody that has taught you. Uh, my question is for people wanting to start streaming or wanting to play a game specific like Fortnite or Apex, what has been the most helpful resource for learning? Has it just been watching other streamers or uh, just, you know, get in the game and play? Like, where have you learned the most from? Um, probably learned the most from uh, all three things, or like the three, there, I, I, I would say three different ways. The first one was watching people. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say uh, on YouTube or yeah. I'm just watching them stream. And the second one was practicing it, like uh, not necessarily using act like it, the exact settings that they were using, but trying them out and then going and then uh, you know adjusting them from there because mm -hmm. they'll even tell you, tell you that don't don't use what I use, use what works for you. Right. Try out my stuff, but you know make it work for you because a lot of the, like. I my my I don't have long fingers and I can't reach a lot of the keys that those guys can. Yeah. So you have to you just got to kind of you know trial and error type of thing. Uh, just spend time practicing. And then the third thing I would say is um, probably I guess my third tip would be if you want to get good at a game, um, find find the find the one guy that people like okay for example uh shroud at the time was probably one of the best PUBG players yeah right so i watched him a lot yeah um uh i looked up like people took screenshots of all his settings right and i checked them out tried them out just like i said the two tips and then the third thing was um i would ask uh, other players when I was playing the game like if I did random duos or something mm -hmm. but I came in um, like if, if I could tell they were pretty good like hey can you know can I ask you a question yeah uh, what do you use for this mm -hmm. and a lot of times they'll be like oh uh, do this and then you change it and you're like whoa right? right asking people that play the game and you could tell are pretty good that's that's a that's a good tip yeah I could, I could give you yeah mm -hmm. and like with some games you'll have like add-ons that you can add to the user mm -hmm. interface or functionality of the game and playing games like you know a scene that you start streaming warcraft and yeah that's a yeah, game yeah. i've played for like 12 I, years i've never played it never really seen it played even uh -huh. um somebody told me to try it and that i'd love it and i actually saw uh, one of my favorite streamers playing it and he was like totally into it and oh, i yeah. was like i was like man okay so i tried it out I loved it. The only problem is it's a super grindy game, and oh. I just don't have time to play it. Yep, I I have not played in the last week, and it it's killing me right now. Like mm -hmm. I want to I want to play Apex. I want to play you yeah know, Warcraft and all this. And the nice thing about first person shooters is it's not unless you're grinding accolades. Like there's not a huge advantage to playing more other than you get better and you have fun. Mm -hmm. So, but whenever you play games that are grindy like Rust or Warcraft. Um, a, a one or two days in a row missed can can really set you yeah. back in comparison so yep. mm -hmm. what is um like with playing warcraft like what's been the biggest like learning curve or the thing that's been the most difficult in comparison to the games you've been playing before um i would say with warcraft is understanding the game mm -hmm. like understanding each character's like the benefit of each character like their Okay, I would say the rotations. Like, that's we weird to me. I don't understand, like, the character uh, rotations. Like, what the, what spells or what abilities yeah, do you or, use in an or order? If, if you're going to play as a rogue, what kind of rogue? Are you going to play as an assassin or a uh, sword? You know, there's a bunch of different mm -hmm. things you can do. Um, and then, like, uh, playing, like, in, a, in dungeons and stuff, like, uh, like the roles, right? That's that was weird to me. I, I still am like, oh, I don't really yeah, know what's going on. You but... go from playing solo, like streaming solo, yeah. to playing Warcraft. And mm -hmm. for people that don't know, Warcraft is like a fantasy game where you have yeah. like like wizards and warriors and all this stuff, and and rogues, and they're all um, working together in most of the cases to have some sort of common objective or a, a quest. Mm -hmm. And then you can go into a dungeon, which is like you taking on more difficult enemies and you have to play with teamwork like you have to have good communication and everybody has a role and they have to fulfill it in order for the game to progress mm -hmm. and if you don't then 
Yeah, you definitely have to understand your role. Like, uh, as a I, uh, right now, I'm playing as a dwarf rogue, mm-hmm. and I know that my role is DPS, which means damage per per uh, second, right? Yep. So you're just I wanna, hitting. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to pull as much damage per second as I can, but then you got you then you got your tank, and you want to make sure that he has aggro for the. Uh, Whoever, you, whatever you're fighting, yeah, right? Make sure the guy that's supposed to be taking damage for mm-hmm. your team is the one that's getting hit. Because if if somebody that isn't, they could get downed, and mm-hmm. and then your your whole group will die, and then they'll blame you. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, and then you got your healers, the guys in the back that are healing, right? Yeah. It's yeah. There's there's a lot that goes with it. But I really I fell in love with the game because it is fun. It's yeah. really cool. Yeah, my uh my fiance is playing it now. Uh, nice. My <laughs> my. Cool biological dad my uh stepmom and my stepbrother my stepbrother's like five i think he just turned five and uh they all play nice. it That's so cool. it's it's cool when you get a whole family playing a game mm-hmm. uh maybe it's like maybe it's such a 2019 thing because like <laughs> before it's like oh well the whole family's playing board games tonight mm-hmm. it's like yeah, oh, yeah. We're, we're playing apex yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah that's that's the truth i would say that technology is going in that direction for sure i mean i've been watching people stream uh on friday nights people stream uh, monopoly with their friends like that's, that's cool you know that's like the the online monopoly and it's really kind of neat to see this is pretty funny so why do you think people watch those types of streams like what's the reason for that um i don't know just because watching so it's like uh watching uh them and their friends have a ball and laugh and, and give yeah. each other our time you know it's just kind of you know it's kind of fun that's that's why i liked watching like um when i started getting into fortnite like I said, whenever I have an interest in something, I really put a lot of uh, attention into it, like uh, research and all that stuff. So I started finding the guys that were good at Fortnite. Mm-hmm. When I started watching them play with each other, like play games and and like make fun of each other and like uh, you know give give each other a hard time, it's really funny. You know, it's like you know I don't know. It's it's what it's what me and Nighthawk do, and it's just a blast. You know, mm-hmm. so I don't know. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, and for people that. Like I guess as you play and start posting content on social media, people that you've known for a long time probably ask you questions. Mm-hmm. You run into them in public and they ask you questions about mm-hmm. it. What has been like one of the biggest misunderstandings that people have about streaming or about what it is that you're doing when you're playing these games? Like why do people watch those types of things? Um, I would say that the biggest misunderstanding when it comes to streaming is people think uh, that you're just, I don't, I don't know how to explain that or well i don't have how to say it other than people think that you're just showing you play games mm-hmm. right but really uh you're just sharing and and uh also like trying to build a community as well mm-hmm. you know like uh whenever you start getting a good following you kind of build this community that everybody kind of starts to see each other in the chat and be like, Hey, what's up, you know, and talk to each other. A lot of time it's right now I'm still pretty, pretty small. So a lot of it's like all, all the people we know and they're, they're talking to each other. It's really fun. Then they'll ask me questions and stuff. But, uh, but, but also there's a lots of opportunities um, for streamers nowadays, such that, such as you can earn some pretty good money as a streamer. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, I, that wasn't really my intention, uh, other than, you know, if it took off, that'd be cool. You know, I'd be, I'd be okay with being a full-time streamer, uh, just because like something that I really, really enjoy doing. Um, but also, uh, it, I've just seen s- some really cool stuff done by streamers like, uh, Lupo, Dr. Lupo and stuff. Uh, he raised like several million dollars for St. Jude hospital yeah. and, just maybe that opportunity to me would just be really cool to be able to to um, build a community that just likes to give, you know. Yeah, family you know? friendly. Yeah, you know, it's just just stuff like that. But definitely the misunderstanding that they don't that people do not realize that you can make money as a streamer, mm-hmm. um, and there's lots of opportunities. Uh, like I would say, Twitch just rolled out a bunch of cool stuff for affiliates, and I just got into their affiliate program, yes. to where uh, they're giving um, affiliates opportunities to earn ad revenue, which is pretty cool. That's mm-hmm. they're they're one of the only streaming platforms that lets people that aren't partners earn ad revenue, yep. right? So each time, uh, like if I 
need to take a break. I'll play a 30 second ad and anybody in the chat that's that watches it, it contri it, it uh, uh, contributes me, to me, but also um, they actually um, can earn um, bits, which is like they're, they're pennies a piece. You can earn like 10, 10 cents, I think, 10 bits or something like that at a time uh, watching mm -hmm. ads while you're uh, watching your favorite streamer too. That's awesome. So it's kind of cool. And then it's just a way for you to give too, like to the streamer and cheer and ask questions, you know. Yeah. That's cool. Well, speaking of money, it's time to pay bills. Mm -hmm. So for people listening right now, and uh, maybe you're interested in music, maybe you mm -hmm. like listening to some awesome, sick jams. Mm -hmm. uh, today's sponsor is Hill Zion Records. This is one of our first sponsors, so we're really happy to have them uh, contributing to our company. And our company, again, Triflix LLC, we have the podcast, uh, but we also do media and video things. And this is a company that we're partnering with to provide all of their video and pho photography services. Sweet. And in exchange, they wanted to all start sponsoring our podcast. So if you guys are interested in uh, more of like rap, hip hop, musical, uh, anything within that, Hill Zion Records, specifically X-Truth, you should definitely check him out. He's got some great music. We've actually made lyric videos for him before. Nice. They're based out of Nashville, Tennessee. And I, I highly recommend them, not just because they're paying, but because I like their music before we started partnering. So we talked about learning and we talked about misunderstandings. Uh, what advice do you have for people that are interested in streaming that would like to get started? Um, so where I'm at now, I'm at a, I would say that I'm at a point in my setup and uh, my streaming I would say I'm more of a hobbyist, not looking for a career, but mm -hmm. if it became that, that'd be cool. Yeah. But um, at my point now, I don't really need anything else mm -hmm. like to to add to make sure I have a good quality stream, um, a reliable um, yeah. setup that I know is not going to let me down. Um, but it took me a long time to get there. But yeah. you don't have to have what I have to be to start streaming. Right. Right. Um, my biggest encouragement is uh, just save up and get like if it's going to take you a couple more weeks or even a month or two to build a really nice computer. Yeah. Um, I advise you to just wait mm -hmm. and, and save because it's a lot harder to upgrade than it is to just build it right. first. Right. Um, so you would recommend people. I mean, if, if they have something that they can start streaming with, of course, use that. But right, yeah, yeah. whenever mm -hmm. they've saved up, do you recommend building or buying a, a new unit? So my first computer, I store bought it. Mm -hmm. And go, if I could do it again, I would not have done that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if people want to build their, and they don't know how, what would you recommend for them? I would tell you to go. So there's there's uh, two guy, or two or three Guy, people on YouTube that I highly recommend, and that's that they're how I learned to build the computers that I have, mm -hmm. and um, some of the ones you're doing for clients. Now. Right? Yeah. yeah. So if you uh, if you need one built, you can go straight to uh, Wolfie. Here. I I would say I'm definitely local right now, but I would be interested in making it to where I could ship mm -hmm. ship 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 stuff to people. You know, so. builds. If you're local and you want it built, come to Wolfgang, of course. But if if you aren't, or if you would like to do this all on your own, he said he has the three people that uh, that you'd recommend. Yeah. So so if you want to do it on your own, uh, there's a guy um, on YouTube. His name is Joey Delgato. Okay. And he does he does fun builds and and has a lot of like um um, she really what they call that like he just. Uh, like he'll just show you basics, mm -hmm. right? But if you really want to see how you do it step by step, uh, he does do step by step videos, and they're really long. But it's so you actually can see how you do it step right. by step, right? It takes time to learn that, right? And 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 the the his videos were really awesome um, because uh, I had no idea 
what, how to build a computer at all, right? Mm -hmm. But like after watching a couple of his step by step videos, I was like, I felt confident in doing it. It was like it's not that bad. It, it's pretty. It's pretty simple. And he would tell he would tell you like, don't do this or like this is what you need to watch out for. And and after watching a couple of them, I was like, you know, this this isn't too bad. It's pretty simple. Yeah. You know. Um. But I will say, if you got if if you just don't feel comfortable doing it, um. Uh, there is only one pre-built company that I recommend, and it's NZXT, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that's um, a good company. I, I would recommend them only uh, just because they build their computers with, like, brand name, quality parts. Yeah, and uh, they build their own cases, too. Which right, is really, yeah. They have, and they have a lot opinion, of the, the prettiest ones. Yeah, and they have a lot of the parts that you would even buy when you build your own computer, mm -hmm. right? Like the coolers and stuff. Like they, you know, they put out good quality yeah. stuff. And all the, and I would say all the bigger name streamers even use their computers because they're sponsored by them, obviously. Yeah. But, but they're good computers, right? So did you mention all three names? I heard. I thought I only uh, two. So, Joey Delgado. Um, if you're wanting to see the data side of things and what what what's uh, better than another or what's what would be good enough uh jay's two cents he yep. does really awesome videos on on graphics cards mostly i would say yeah but uh, water cooling. yeah water cooling he does some fun videos uh he's just a really cool guy to watch too so jay's two cents and then the third guy um that kind of does pc builds but he does more like um kind of more higher end pc builds um, but just, you know, fun for, like, people that are into this stuff. They go, wow, those are really mm -hmm. powerful PCs. Uh, Paul's Hardware, I think. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. So. Okay, so there's the three. And now we are coming to an end, right? This is uh, uh, the closing of the show, but it, it doesn't have to be sad. We can make it a happy one. <laughs> and that is, if you are interested in contacting Wolfgang because of any questions that you have about streaming, about building a computer, uh, about like working on that social media aspect side because that's such a large part of trying to build that stream it's community. It's hard. It's really hard, actually. Yeah. But yeah. If you want to build a community, man, whatever it is, how can people reach you? And also, do you have a Discord? I do have a Discord, actually. Um, uh, the best way to find all of my socials, um, to find uh, my Discord and all that stuff, uh, just go to my Twitch channel. Uh, just search capital W Wolf Gunny 701 and uh, find my channel. And in my panels, I'll have uh, just panels you can click on to go all, to all my different socials. Uh, and if you want to get a hold of me, the best way to get a hold of me is probably to direct message uh, my uh, Facebook page or Twitter, probably. Okay. And people can get to the Facebook and Twitter through the Through the hub, Twitch page, through yeah. Through the mm -hmm. Twitch hub. Mm -hmm. But you could. Honestly, you could probably just search Wolfgunny Seven Hundred One on pretty much every so, social media platform, yeah. and I'm, yeah, you'll find me. Wolfgunny Seven Hundred One. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. so there you go. It, like I said, it doesn't have to be a sad ending. If uh, if you want to keep the party going, head over to the Twitch page for that Wolfgunny Seven Hundred One and uh, ask him some questions. Watch the stream. Uh, and just yeah, that's a good way. That's a good way to get a hold of me. Say something in the chat. I'll say, say hey. something in the chat. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's actually really fun. If um, if if people want to play with you, is that option? Yeah, usually I will. Um, I will play with uh, like people watching and followers. Um, I just well, once again, I just let you know. I try to keep it family family friendly as yeah. possible. So no sailors. So, yep. Well, I mean, you could be a sailor and play with me, man. Just try to do your best, you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So there we go. We got links. Um, I think we're, we're good on everything. But is there anything else that you would like to add? Anything else you want to say to people? Any last um, words? I would just say, uh, once again, if you're wanting to get into the streaming world, I just want you to know it's going to be hard. It'll be really hard. Uh, but one thing that... But the, where I've gotten now is just because uh, people that did make it said don't give up, and mm -hmm. so I really pushed at it, and um, I'm I've made it into the affiliate program on Twitch, and at that point it's really just kind of going up from there. But congratulations, man. yeah, it's it, I, it, I'm excited. It's cool. Good. All right. So there's the final words. Now, if you guys are watching, and we appreciate you guys sticking this long throughout the video and learning about Wolfgang and streaming. 
But if you guys are watching and you are creative, if you're innovative like Wolfgang here or any of the other guests we've had, if you know somebody that is, if, uh, if you want to come on the show, recommend somebody for the show, we'd be happy to have you. If you are wanting to support the show, we have a Patreon. Uh, there'll be a link in the description below on this video if you're watching on YouTube. If you're on uh, Spotify or anywhere else, you can always go to triflix.com, check it out. And if you want to actually become a sponsor for the channel, like Hill Zion Records, and uh, continue to uh, put in a little bit of money so that we can continue producing this, that would be great. We'd really appreciate it. Other than that, I hope you guys have a great day. I hope you do too, Wolfgang. You too, man. All right. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. You guys, we'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.